Today's our crop of the day is a couple of nice big boulders of chalcedonic silica with lots of bladed carbonate replacement texture. So you might think that I'm on a low sulfidation epithermal vein system because those two textures are characteristic of those systems when you're at or above the boiling zone. But there's two ways that you can form bladed carbonate replacement texture. And this is the other one. The first way is to overgrow and sometimes replace the thin bladed calcite crystals that grow in low temperature hydrothermal systems with quartz and or chalcedonic silica. That texture is characterized by a lattice work of randomly oriented blades, sometimes with thin plate shaped cavities at the center where the carbonate has been dissolved out or sometimes that cavity is filled up with chalcedonic silica that either replaces the original carbonate or infills the cavity later on. The other way to make a very similar texture is what's happening here. These boulders are from a large vein system in a high grade metamorphic environment. Most of the primary quartz in the vein is buck textured, indicating a high temperature hydrothermal environment. And all of the silica you can see here is secondary. The vein is filled with buck quartz plus lots of coarse grained rhombic carbonate and sulphides, mostly chalcopyrite. And when that vein weathers, the groundwater dissolves the sulphide, produces lots of sulfuric acid, the acid mobilizes silica and replaces the carbonate. Where the replacement is complete, you get this chalcedonic silica that you can see here. And where the replacement is partial, replaces along the cleavage planes in the carbonate and the remaining carbonate is dissolved away to leave cavities and a texture that's very similar to the classic bladed carbonate replacement that you see in low sulfidation epithermal quartz veins. Except that in this type the cleavage planes leave parallel blades in each domain and where they intersect it's in that classic rhombic cleavage angle that you see in coarse grain carbonate. So I'm on another part of the vein here where lots of the primary carbonate has survived. You can see the coarse rhombic crystals here and some of the parallel cleavage planes clearly etched by rainwater in this case. And there's some of the gossan after sulphide down here. And the acid from this is busy dissolving away this. So you can see how this could quite easily produce that texture of the bladed carbonate that we saw in the really silicious piece. And it's clear that this is calcite. Here's a piece of the primary buck textured quartz, quite unlike what you would see in any epithermal vein system. And there's some cavities here filled with gossan after both primary sulphide and carbonate. Here's a big patch of dark brown porous gossan after sulphide in the chalcedonic silica. So that'd be a clue that you're probably not in a low sulphidation epithermal vein system. So when you come across some bladed carbonate texture and a bunch of chalcedonic silica, you can't automatically jump to the conclusion that the system is epithermal. Look around for the rest of the things in the vein and try and decide what's the environment of formation before you jump to that conclusion.